the final set of comments that I would like to make on general scattering theory is the second type of question we can ask. This tells us the size of our packets. The next question is to figure out where and when they appear. So this last topic is the location of the packets. And to uh, illustrate this, I will again draw one of our um, trajectory diagrams. So we will have something like so where I will be tracking the maximum or peak location of each of my different packets as a function of time t. And when we look at our solution, I'm going to have to pan up here a little bit, we will, should notice a few things. Right? We have this incoming packet. Now, if you look at the incoming packet, all of these factors and my uh, forward wave factor and my standard time dependent phase factors all combine together to give the same free space Gaussian packet we've been analyzing all semester. I'm not going to go through the analysis of its location again, right? We know from stationary phase that just gives us a packet that comes in straight towards the origin with velocity v. The incoming packet is going to look just something like it did in the step down case, right? The next piece would be then there's going to be some kind of a reflected packet and we've been through that type of an analysis in the past right we're going to think about it a, a little bit in just a moment um, but what I just want to point out right now is that in the past we've had seen two cases in this step down case there was no delay in the reflection but when we had quantum tunneling, you might remember there was a delay before the reflected wave came out. So generically speaking, what I'm expecting to find here is once again, my incoming packet will come in with whatever velocity I've chosen to send it in with. It then will generate a reflected packet that will come back out, uh, but the, with the same, well, with opposite slope, same magnitude, but opposite velocity because it comes out with the expected classical velocity. This is then the reflected uh, packet. But there may well be some time delay in here. And I call that delta t sub r. That's the time delay for the reflection. Now, in our general scattering case, remember our object occupies the space between x equals 0, which is along this line, and x equals l. So I'll just draw an extra line here. This is going to be at x equals l. And in this region, of course, I have no idea what's happening in that very uh, complex um, set of potentials that represent my object. But what I do know for sure is that eventually there may well be some kind of transmitted packet. And in fact, that's precisely what my second term here represents. And this uh, second term with this transmitted packet then will, will emerge on the other side. And it also, in general, may experience some sort of a time delay from when the incoming packet hits. I don't know how much time delay there might be, but it might start over here. And then once it reaches the uh, transmitted region, it's going to travel with the expected classical velocity, the kind of thing we've seen before. You can work it through and do the stationary phase if you like, but it'll have some other velocity. It might be larger or smaller depending upon the value of V0, but the velocity we find here will have the same ratio. It's the same analysis as before, actually. Ratio of the momentum times the incoming momenta is just the expected classical velocity. The thing that we want to really think about is whether or not there's going to be and how much time delay there might be in the transmitted packet. Now, let's consider what the time delay in the reflected packet may depend upon. If we go back and take a look at this, right, we are talking about analyzing this psi r. And if we were to analyze it, we would use our standard stationary phase argument. I just don't feel like writing it all down again. And what will, will happen is we will have to find the phase or the argument of this complex number. We will uh, subtract from it the phase from this term, minus k1x. And then we'll have our minus time dependent factor. We will then take the derivative of this. 
and you can run through this. You can also find it in the class notes. We will take the derivative of that, and then it's going to tell us these time dependent and the space piece will tell us I've got a packet traveling with velocity minus v naught. That's my reflected packet, but the location and ultimately the time when I find that packet is affected by the phase factor associated with this amplitude. You might recall in the past analysis um, when we had the uh, quantum tunneling through the step, this phase factor was something like minus twice the arc cosine of some factor, and we had to take the time derivative of that, and it was the time, I mean the the k derivative, because I'm doing stationary phase. And it was the k derivative of that that actually told me the time delay. So what you will find if you carry out the stationary phase analysis, and you can look in the notes for this, or you can carry it out yourself. We've done it so many times. I just want to quote the result for you. What we need to do then is to take the argument of that complex reflection amplitude because that gives me that additional phase factor in the phase. We're doing stationary phase, so we have to take the derivative with respect to k1, and of course we evaluate at k1 equals my incoming wave vector k0. And this then, if you think about it, the argument, the phase angle, has no dimensions. I'm dividing by wave vector. Wave vector has inverse length dimensions, so this has dimensions of length. In my quantum tunneling uh, example, the distance was actually twice the exponential decay length because I had to tunnel in and then tunnel back out. And so to get the time delay, I had to divide by a certain velocity. And the velocity in general turns out to be the velocity that we uh, found in our expression actually when we had done the quantum tunneling case. You divide by the incoming velocity. And you can prove this from stationary phase. I just want to uh, quote the results so we can move to our, our next topic for the day. There is, of course, also now an additional potential time delay. This is the time delay in when the transmitted packet appears. And it's going to follow exactly the same logic. When I do stationary phase on this transmitted piece, I will evaluate the derivative at the peak of my amplitudes, and the phases will be the phases of t, the arg of t. Now there's going to be an i k2x, and then the usual time-dependent parts. The second two pieces give us this behavior, where I'm just coming up at this classically expected velocity. And the first piece then gives me some extra displacement associated with this phase. And I see here I've uh, given a slight uh, error in what I've written down because it's absolutely critical that we always center our wave at location L, right? Because we're going to be matching boundary conditions at L. So if I want to get the proper result here, I need to write this in the form of x minus L. And when I write the transmission amplitude in that particular form, then, in fact, I will find that the uh, time delay will be the arg of the phase angle associated with that transmission amplitude. Once again, the k derivative evaluated at k1 equals k0, k1 equals k0. And there's a little bit of a question of what velocity we should divide by. But it turns out when you run the math, the argument becomes exactly the same as the argument over here. And it ends up you actually are dividing by v0. So now you see we can get everything. We can get packet locations. We can get time delays. We can get the packet sizes and the reflection and the transmission probabilities all out of the general solution. All we need to do is look at the solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Everything can then be gotten from it, and in fact, it can all be boiled down to the behavior of these complex numbers, the phases and amplitudes of the reflection amplitude and the transmission amplitude. And that then wraps up our discussion of scattering theory.